Today we're going to talk about the Antec NX 200M but also going to include it in some sort of a budget build if the prices were as they were before COVID. So it's going to be quite interesting to see what we can manage for around $1000 and uh, it, there's going to be some new parts, there's going to be some old parts and it's going to be quite interesting. So uh, stay tuned and after this we're going to check out more. Same performance, same quality, a bit of a different design, a bit of a different name as well. We have Kingston Fury, Renegade Beast and Impact DDR4 memory which are just incredible. Check out the links below in the description for more information. Basically what we have here is the Antec NX 200M and apart from the standard review and the tests and benchmarks and everything that we usually do with the case, today we're going to mention some other parts as well inside this build that kind of sum up to 1000 euros, 1000 dollars uh, which are in some sort of a budget uh, category when it comes to old school parts, new parts and of course the standard MSRP before uh, COVID-19. So the only thing that is basically kicking the price up by I would say $600 is the GPU so that's really a shame. But still we have here uh, Asus GeForce GTX 1080 Ti ROG Strix. It's a great card, still is, uh, but the prices are just incredibly insane as you already know. Additional to that, we have AMD Ryzen 3 3300X, 2x8 uh, gigs uh, of RAMs on 3600 MHz. We have an SSD, we have the Biostar B550M Silver Motherboard, which is a micro ATX board that perfectly fits inside this case, since this case uh, has um, support for, for MITX and Mini ITX. And uh, finally we have, well, it's not finally, we have the uh, Antec uh, EAG uh, 750 watts uh, Pro power supply, which is semi-modular. We have a combination of fans, which come with Prism 120 RGB with dual ring. And the cool thing, you get three fans, uh, dressable RGB, fan hub and everything. But basically since the, fan, since the motherboard has everything we need, I just use those three fans, one at the back and two at the front. And we have the Antex A40 Pro, which is some sort of a budget CPU tower cooler, which would uh, cool down this uh, processor quite nicely. Now, all in all, I would say this is a kind of nicely organized uh, build for the price. And uh, especially if we're uh, talking about the old uh, MSRP of the GPUs. Otherwise, as I said, the prices would be around uh, 1500 seven to 1700 depending on used cards and the used the GTX 1080 Ti. Now, first of all, let's start with the Antec uh, NX 200M. We have a possibility to place uh, two 120 millimeter fans on front, one at the back and at I think we could squeeze three on front, but you know, it's a possibility. But you can also place uh, two 140 millimeter fans on front. And in the power supply shroud at the front, you have a cutout for radiator support as well. Since on top, I don't see a possibility of placing a radiator. Now, I did place a GTX 1080 Ti inside and uh, taking into consideration the size of the case and the GPU I wouldn't suggest going with this GPU inside this case because I had to remove the CPU tower cooler to place the GPU inside and it's basically from the front from the back side to almost touching the front it has like half a millimeter uh, space inside uh, at the front so it's quite a tight Fit. But if you go with a radiator on front, I would definitely suggest going with a shorter card, obviously for two and a half centimeter shorter than the GTX 1080 Ti, but still okay. On front, we don't have a possibility to mount uh, SSDs. You have uh, on the power supply shroud possibility to mount uh, two 120 millimeter fans, which can blow air from the bottom to the GPU and give some more airflow. 
At the back you have a decent cable management uh, possibility and it's quite alright, I would say. At the bottom you have a hard drive cage with the possibility to mount 2.5 inch SSD. Uh, now, talking about something else, uh, talking about the space inside the case and especially since I always tend to use extenders for the power supply just for the builds to look uh, nicer, cooler and cleaner. Uh, I managed to use the EAG Pro 750W with original cables and uh, cable mod extenders, uh, so it fits quite nicely. Now the temperatures, um, I was expecting a bit higher temperatures just because we have the A40 Pro on the processor since it has much smaller um, heat sink and four heat pipes uh, cooling down the processor. I thought that the temperatures would be something like this. So in AIDA64 Extreme Edition, uh, benchmarking the processor and the GPU processor went up to 68 Celsius degrees and the GPU was around 67. The temperature for the graphic card is quite normal. I know this card runs uh, even higher on 75 Celsius degrees. So with the fans right on front uh, blowing cold air in the GPU, that's quite all right and the CPU tower cooler, I think the temperature could go lower with a higher, thicker heatsink, uh, but for this situation, and since we're talking about some sort of a budget-oriented uh, build, I would say that this is quite all right. Of course, I do have to mention that this is a synthetic benchmark, and when we include uh, that none of these scenarios will actually happen in real life, except if you're rendering a video or something similar to that let me just do this or something similar to that i don't think you'll have uh, those kind of temperatures so if you're gaming on this type of build you'll be perfectly fine even with this cooler because the temperatures would be much much lower but then again not even these temperatures are something to worry about uh, when we're talking about the front I.O. panel, uh, we, we have power on button, reset button, two indication lights, uh, two USB 2.0, uh, microphone and headset header, so 3.5mm jacks, and one USB 3.0, which is quite alright for a budget case, you can't expect a Type-C connection on top. At the back you have four expansion slots, um, standard mounting for your power supply opening here, and the cool thing, this is how you open the tempered glass, and this is how you completely remove it. As you can see, the build, easy, simple, nothing to worry about except for the length of the GPU. I would suggest going with a micro ATX uh, motherboard just because it uh, fills out the space inside and uh, kind of looks uh, much nicer than going with the mini ITX motherboard. I think we did that with another Antec case and I honestly hate those cables running from the power supply shroud to the top part for instance the power on button and similar stuff you have two openings even three openings at the right side for 24 pin uh, cable for your uh, motherboard and SATA as well and at the top you have a nice opening for the 8 pin EPS which you could uh, I would suggest connecting before mounting the fans on top because you'll have issues uh, getting and accessing the 8 pin EPS so yeah all in all, I would say quite nice case, a very simple, budget oriented, as you can see, it really does look nice if you place a addressable RGB fans on front and it would be quite cool to have that. But looking at it like this right now, there's no possibility to mount a third fan, so two 120 or two 140 and that's basically it. Great combo, great uh, for, for the price of course, uh, nice fans, nice CPU tower cooler in the budget category, I mean we're talking about $30 for the CPU tower cooler which is just quite alright, uh, you could go, it's better, but if you're into certain budget, uh, this is the way I would go. So yeah guys. Uh, this was it. I'm placing the links for the Annex 200M for the Prism 120 ARGB set with three fans, uh, LED strip and a controller. And if you're interested in a budget fan, I'll place the A40 Pro from Amtec as well as the EAG Pro 750 watts power supply. So guys, thank you for watching. Check out the links below. Don't forget to support the channel with subscribing, pressing the like button and notification bell so you don't miss any future content. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.